Hello and welcome again to Cloud Force Vibes. So today is a perfect day for us to shoot a quick spotlight video on Lepanthes telepagonoflora. This is a lot of people's favorite Lepanthes. A lot of people know this orchid and love this orchid and for some reason are scared to grow it. Um, and I do understand the humidity thing can be a little bit daunting, but um, this is one of the best beginner Lepanthes you can try out and by far one of the most beautiful Lepanthes species that exists. Um, it has these beautiful orange flowers. They're about the size of your thumbnail, give or take. It's a very petite plant. The uh, foliage is small. The growth habit is pretty small. <clears throat> so, when I originally got this orchid, I grew it in a jar terrarium. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw a picture of that up so you guys can get an idea. I don't have a great picture, but um, this is my original orchid setup, and this was one of my first orchids, honestly. I I grew about four or five windowsill phalaenopsis and uh, I think I had a Shalob Tolkien and then I got a few species. I got the Bulbophyllum ambrosia, I got the Dyneema polybulbin and then I put in an order from Equigenera and I got four Lepanthes, I'm sorry, three Lepanthes and one Platystella. Uh, I still have all of those plants. Um, this was one of my original eight orchids. It really was. So it was the Caladictyon and um, the Dodsonii, and I still have issues blooming the Dodsonii, but I do not grow cool enough, honestly, so that's another story, but getting back to it, this was a great beginner's Lepanthes because it's very forgiving. It's a very vigorous growing plant. It wants to grow. It likes intermediate to warm conditions, so you don't have to worry about getting it too cool or keeping it in too much of a montane environment. Um, like I said, I, I grew this in a jar on a windowsill for several months um, and it grew 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 in that time shortly after I made a small 10 gallon orchidarium basically basically for my Lepanthes and the uh, Platystella and from there that's how I got my love into these miniature orchids I realized that it was a whole lot easier to care for them than I thought. Uh, they just take low feed levels, relatively low light levels, and they just bloom, bloom, bloom. I mean, they are very, very rewarding plants, and um, I, I highly recommend them to anybody. So, having that said, care tips for Lepanthes telepagonoflora, and general, general Lepanthes care tips, but specifically related to telepagonoflora, it likes a little bit more light than some Lepanthes. That's why I keep it higher up. You'll notice if you give it too much light, the leaves will go a little bit purple. So it's a delicate balance, but I still keep it relatively high in the Orchidarium. It gets pretty bright light. Uh, LED light only, no sunlight at all. As for feed for this thing, I give it low feed levels. Think Masdevalia or Dracula. It gets about 80 to 90 parts per million. I, I only feed my miniatures the MSU. I haven't tinkered with anything else yet because they just grow so well with it so I leave it at that. I do give them Cal Mag and Kelp Max at about 40 to 60 parts per million about once every, you know, so the Kelp Max I do once every week. The, the Cal Mag I will do in between fertilizing and watering. Um, I do flush them very frequently. They like clean water. Um, they can't get enough of it so the way that I work it typically if I feed one day the next time I water them, which is usually every other day in the tank, they will get nothing but a flush of clean water. The next time around I might do cow mag, then a flush, then kelp, then a flush, and so on and so forth. But they are very low feeders, but they do appreciate a nice variety of low, low parts per million feed. Humidity levels for these, I like to keep it above 80%. This tank runs about 90% to be honest. and they thrive, but they will grow well um, in anything above 80% humidity. Temperatures, it comes down to 60 degrees in this tank during the winter time. 
Um, I try to always get it to get as close to 60 as I can, but it doesn't always work out with the summertime temperatures. And as for highs, I never let it go past 80. 78 is the warmest I like to see this tank, but 80 is just fine. This plant can tolerate a little bit warmer temperatures. You could probably take it up to 82, 83 without having to worry too much as long as you have a really high humidity, um, 85 to 90 percent, and I don't think it would be an issue at all. It likes a fair amount of air movement. Um, as a matter of fact, I would say it's a, a necessity for it to have some air movement. It can't be in completely stagnant humid air or it will rot. And um, I really can't think of anything else to say. So other than having some of the most beautiful flowers you could possibly pack into an orchidarium, um, it's almost always in bloom or bud and it is just a wonderful plant. So any of you guys who've ever looked at this plant and said you wish you could have it, you absolutely can. So I hope you enjoyed my little Lepanthes spotlight video. I hope you learned something. I really hope I can help inspire you guys and teach you guys how to grow these plants because it really isn't that difficult. They aren't as fussy as everyone thinks as long as you can find some way to supplement some humidity. So. That's my video for today. I really hope you enjoyed it, and um, I know it's been a long awaited for a few of you guys, so that's how I care for Lepanthes telepagonaflora. So thanks for watching. Um, as always, I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys are staying safe. Happy growing.